I always say I want to live at least 500 years. And I think it's going to be possible. I think that we just have to, you know, take care of ourselves and stay healthy for another 20, 30 years. And in the meantime, all these scientists that we are now visiting on our trip, they will come up with amazing breakthroughs that will boost our lives with another 20 and 50 years. And then in this extra time, another 50 and another 50. You are here for a reason, but navigating this human life can be challenging. How do you care for your body, mind, and spirit to make the most of your time here on Earth? How can you harness your incredible human potential? In this podcast, we explore these questions and more to help you craft your best life yet. Welcome to I Am Human. Hello, humans. I am Dr. Yami. I am your host, and I am so happy to be here with you today. So thank you for being here. If you haven't already, please rate and review my podcast. I would greatly appreciate it. And I would appreciate even more if you share it with somebody that you think would enjoy this episode. Thank you so much for being here and for doing that. So what does it mean to be human? To be human means that we can die young. We can die of infectious diseases. We can die from chronic health conditions. And it also means to have the will to live on beyond a hundred years. My guest today is Marek Piotrowski, a seasoned marketing strategist and former CEO of successful ad agencies. And he has seamlessly transitioned his expertise from the business world to the realm of longevity promotion. With a robust background as a CMO in robotics, he's now dedicated to demystifying breakthroughs in the field of longevity, offering practical advice and protocols to empower individuals to embrace longer, healthier, and more active lives. Marek's mission is to bridge the gap between cutting edge research and the public, igniting inspiration and belief in the attainability of longevity and driving both interest and investment to fuel the growth of the longevity industry and accelerate scientific advancements for extended health spans and lifespans. Alongside his son, Alex, Marek initiated the Beyond Time Project, embarking on a year-long global journey to unearth the best longevity solutions, engaging with industry luminaries, and creating a movie to share remarkable breakthroughs and ready-to-apply protocols. And this conversation was interesting, exciting, fascinating, heartwarming. It gave me chills. It gave me butterflies in my stomach. There is a lot in this episode. So we talk about longevity, what longevity is, what radical life extension is, how Madik became interested in this field and what he's hoping to accomplish. We also talk about longevity escape velocity. What is that and what does that mean for us in the next 20, 30 years? What is realistically possible now given the technology and knowledge we currently have available? We talk about biohacking to support longevity, and we talk about Madek's personal goal and how long he wants to live. You're going to be really surprised. I also ask him what he thinks happens when we die, which I was curious about that. We talk about his Beyond Time project. We talk about the longevity map, and we talk about his personal longevity protocol. So what he's personally doing to make sure that he is getting the most time out of his years here, the more years and time on this planet. So this is a really interesting and just a a really fun episode. So I hope that you enjoy it. Thank you so much for being here, humans. And now on to the episode. The information on this podcast is for informational and educational purposes only. 
It is not meant to replace careful evaluation and treatment. If you have concerns about your health or well being, please consult a healthcare professional. Marek Petrovsky, welcome to I Am Human. Such a pleasure having you today. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm super excited about this conversation. I think it's going to be quite interesting. I am definitely also a longevity advocate and something that I'm very interested in, but I think that these are some of the some of the topics that you are interested in have learned about are things that I haven't actually learned much about and so it will be new to my audience. So let's just start from the beginning. What is longevity? So what's the definition of longevity to you and how is it different from radical life extension? Mm-hmm. So for me longevity is lifespan healthman and truly living. I know it's kind of different <laughs> definition that you could expect, but on one hand, we want to live as long as possible. But of course, the basis is the uh, quality of life, so as healthy as possible. Uh, and then we have to live. It's not about just living up to certain protocols. <clears throat> and uh, just not have life and just concentrate on the health and the length of our life, we need to be adventurers, have a purpose and really go forward in our lives because then we have the will to live longer, healthier and prioritize our wellness over uh, convenience. Yes, absolutely. And sounds very aligned to the Blue Zones, which my audience is very familiar with. But how is that different from radical life extension? So radical life extension for me is part of longevity. Actually, before me and my son, we started our quest around the world, uh, I drew a longevity map where I wanted to show a helicopter view on the whole field of longevity. And I did it in the form of a tree. So there are three branches. The first branch is the longevity basics. So everything we can do now, and this is what the Blue Zones are all about. The second branch is biohacking upgrades. And these are all the tweaks that we can do with our bodies, with our mind, you know, through longevity clinics, through different protocols, just to get another 10 or 15 years of our lifespan. And then the third branch is this next level thing, which is radical life extension. And this is all about extending our lives with tens or ultimately hundreds of years. And the most exciting thing is that it's not science fiction anymore. This is something that is just beyond the corner. Yes. Very exciting. So you don't have a background in healthcare. You're not a physician. You have a completely different background from where your career started. So how did you even get interested in any of this? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm not a doctor yet because, you know, I believe if we will <laughs> live for hundreds of years, then we can have different expertises and jobs. So I always say that I want to be a rock star, a doctor, an astronaut. So it's coming. It's coming one day. But (laughs) yes, like most of my life, I was uh, I was in marketing. I was uh, uh, leading, you know, big advertising agencies and working for all the bad brands of our world, like Coca-Cola, Pizza Hut and Burger King. I'm not proud of that now, but now I can use this experience uh, for longevity. So I've just uh, decided some time ago, as I was you know, a big fan of longevity, that, hey, now it's time to give back to the society and then help longevity industry to grow. So I decided to use all my marketing and uh, strategy skills to now help longevity brands to grow, labs, universities, and the whole industry. So I went on a quest with my son and uh, we're making a movie about it. Nice. What triggered it though? Is it something in your life or something that you learned about? What is it that spiked your interest in longevity? So uh, I think seven on a year or year, seven or eight years ago, I was in San Francisco on a conference called Extreme Future Technologies and Forecasting. And they were talking about the things that are going to change the world for better within the next 20, 30 years. And for me, that was enlightening. 
because most people uh, think what's going to be in five years. You know, politicians think what was five years ago. And uh, here they were investing and talking about the things in 20, 30 years. And that inspired me, first of all, I want to do something that will help the world grow in the right direction. And second of all, I want uh, to be the one co-creating the blueprints for this new form of humanity. So, yeah, I just got inspired there with longevity, with cryonics and with space exploration. But then I decided, hey, first longevity. So I make sure that we live for hundreds of years and then let's fly to another galaxy. Why not? <laughs> we'll have time, huh? Okay, well, tell me about this concept, longevity escape velocity. What is that? So actually, a lot of scientists say that within the next 10, 20 years, we will reach this longevity uh, escape velocity. And this will be the time when, thanks to uh, you know, exponential growth of medicine and technology, uh, every year we will be getting more years to our lives than the time that is passing. So actually, our lives will be only getting longer. So uh, death could become optional. Nice. So the longer you live, the longer you live, basically. It's like it just keeps stretching out towards the end and you just get more and more years. Exactly. Of course, you know, the next very important step is not just about prolonging our lives, but about rejuvenating ourselves so that, you know, we are 100 or 150 and we look like we are 30. So this is the ultimate goal. So uh, now as we're traveling, we want to learn from all the top scientists how are we going to achieve that ultimately? Nice. I love it. Okay. So we're in 2024 currently. Currently oh, yeah. in this day and age, what is realistic and possible for a healthy lifespan given the knowledge and the technology that we currently have available? So uh, as you said, you are a longevity advocate too. Uh, so you are already helping uh, your listeners and all the people uh, knowing you with this longevity basics. And this, I believe, can already get us extra 10, 15 years at least just by exercising, having great sleep, the right nutrition, and, and the right mindset. And this is already amazing. And actually, uh, it's also very simple. And this is something that was uh, like, stunned me when I was in the, in the blue zone, in the first one of many, uh, in Okinawa, Japan. I was visiting there with China Woods, who is also a longevity advocate and working with governments to boost longevity among si uh, societies. And we were talking a lot and we agreed that we just need to do whatever our grandmas were telling us, you know, just eat real food, sleep well, go get a wife, be social. So it's very simple, and yet people don't do that because they choose convenience, which I think is the biggest threat to our lives right now. So uh, yes, this is the first step. Checked. I think all your listeners are already doing that. And then I believe that with these biohacking upgrades, uh, starting from saunas and cold plunges through um, microneedling of our skin through red light therapy and stem cell therapies and so on and so on, we will get another 10 or 15 years, which is already great and gives us time to wait for new big di discoveries from the scientists. But then this third step, radical life extension tools, most of them are already here, like genetic therapies. Uh, you probably know Liz Parrish, who is CEO of BioViva and uh, uh, CEO of uh, Genetic Therapies Company. And she is developing genetic therapies and testing them on herself. And they are already doing miracles. Of course, until it's available to the masses, it will take another 10 years, you know, to test it on thousands of people. But if you have $10 million in a pocket, you can already do them on yourself and boost your mind and uh, prevent sarcopenia 
and activate your mitochondria. So we see it in the science fiction movies, but actually it's just here. We just have to wait a couple of years. So yeah. this is it. And then 3D bioprinting, which uh, is already here because I think already five years ago they printed the first living heart. It was still tiny as for a rabbit, but it was functional. So I'm sure that in 10 years, you want a new liver, you get a new liver, you, you need a new eye, you get a new eye. So this will give us spare parts and uh, will give us another 20, 30 or 40 years. So I think we live in amazing times when just everything is becoming possible. And as we were talking to all these top scientists and I was asking them, so what's going to be this biggest thing that will boost our lives um, with another 50 years? And I think it was Brian Kennedy who answered, who say, hey, it's probably something that we don't even talk about right now. We, it was not even discovered and it will, will just come right here and change everything within the next five or 10 years. Yeah, it's super fascinating. And I would say that I feel like for me and people my age, it would be very realistic to live to 100 healthfully and mobile and participating in your community. I mean, I'm so inspired by seeing all these athletes in their 90s out there racing on the track and racing in triathlons. And, and I think they're 90 now. So imagine when we're there, it's going to be even better. And I think a big part of it too is belief. So just like how we weren't able to break that four minute mile because nobody thought it was possible. And then suddenly one person did it and all these people did it. I think once we start believing, yes, it's possible to live long and live healthy and be mobile and not have this stereotype in our brain that you get to a certain age and you're just going to be in a rocking chair and you're going to be in a hospital bed and you're not going to be able to participate in society. I think once we change our perspective, I think that's going to help a lot too. How can we use biohacking to support longevity? I know that you gave a few examples, but maybe give us a, a few of your favorite examples of biohacking and how they can be used now to support longevity. All right. So uh, I will give the simplest hack that probably your audience already knows that. It's a CGM, so continuous glucose monitor. And uh, this is something that lets us learn about our bodies uh, so much that I think everybody should be wearing that, uh, you know, in high school and we will all lo look and feel much better then. So actually, uh, continuous glucose monitor is showing us the sugar levels and is showing us if we get spikes or not. And actually, you know, the spikes are very harmful for, for our bodies. So, uh, after wearing a CGM, I suddenly started understanding all what the nutritionists were talking to me about. And uh, suddenly I just uh, made my portions of uh, nutrition smaller and uh, I cut most of the carbs. And uh, I just saw that, you know, having a bowl of rice is like having a lot of sugar uh, in my tea. So, um, uh, you know, a year ago, uh, I decided, hey, I want to get Bruce Lee abs. You know, just look very fit, uh, which was always my dream. So I even bought Ozempic and I thought, okay, I will just try everything. But then, you know, I knew that it will, you know, make, make me weaker, at least for some time. And I was doing a lot of sports. So I was like delaying, taking this Ozempic and delaying. And at the end, I just put a CGM on myself. And suddenly I changed my diet. I lost, I don't know, six kilograms or more. And I didn't feel like I need Ozempic anymore. So actually, we are very powerful and we just have to learn about ourselves just to introduce it to our habits and, and lifestyle. So this is the simplest biohack that I'm telling to all my friends to do. And, um, uh, you know, the second one, which uh, is very simple, these are these cold plunges and 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 sauna because this just lets our 
bodies regenerate. And it's something that we can all do, just go uh, to a swimming pool and there is usually a sauna. And there is red light therapy, which is also helping us with rejuvenation. And uh, most of the scientists are big fans of hyperbaric chambers. Like there are so many uh, benefits or, of going to a, to a chamber like that, that we should all do it like at least once in a month. And uh, there are so many that I could, you know, just talk for an hour only about biohacking upgrades. But something that we also checking on uh, on our quest, these are uh, longevity clinics which offer different procedures. Uh, I was even invited to a uh, to a clinic in Malaysia when they uh, did a therapy to boost my stem cells. So actually, it was not about uh, taking my stem cells and growing them or putting stem cells from somebody else's placenta into my body, what is usually done, what they did was uh, first they injected me with some proteins to open the cell wall doors of, uh, of stem cells, and then they put other proteins to uh, nourish them so that the stem cells, which are usually already too old in our bodies, they just rejuvenate and they become more potent and they multiply. So I'm still uh, you know, in the process of observing the effects. But this is something that also a lot of scientists on our way were doing. Uh, in some countries, this is not so readily available. Uh, a funny thing is that in China, a lot of people do stem cell therapies, but it's not officially allowed. So it's in the gray zone. Uh, but I think that the research is going forward and probably in five or 10 years, it will be something that we will do on a regular basis. It will become more and more advanced. So uh, there are so many different therapies that we should just all have our longevity doctor, <laughs> which will look holistically uh, on our health and just help us stay as long as possible for, you know, as healthy as possible. So I'm curious if you accomplished your dream of getting the Bruce Lee abs. Oh, not yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> getting closer? Uh, <laughs> yes, getting closer every month. And actually, you know, traveling around the world is... Uh, it's a hard thing when you want to keep up with your habits. Uh, fortunately, I'm traveling with my son, so we stimulate each other. Okay, let's exercise now. Let's have healthy food. Let's not have a can of beer uh, because it feels like holidays, but it's not. So we're supporting each other in that. But actually, when uh, uh, at home, it's so much easier. But still, uh, I keep my weight low. Uh, I exercise a lot. And uh, I think I just have to find a like top coach on my way who will just get this extra fat from my belly out and I will get my Bruce Lee abs. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I do want to go back and, and emphasize because I know that you said this in, your, in several of your videos and also you said at the beginning of this interview, which is the biohacking is more of a subsequent step we don't really want to delve into some of these things until we're really making sure that we're addressing the foundation, correct? Like we want to make sure we're getting plenty of sleep. It's These things aren't like a magic pill. It's things that we can put on top of a healthy foundation to give us even more longevity and more years. Is that how you would see it? Exactly. Like if we don't do the basics and, you know, start taking some pills and supplements and do some biohacks, it will not do much. Like uh, still nutrition, uh, sleep and exercise are the biggest chunks to our healthy longevity now. Maybe at one point in 20, 50 years, there will be a pill that we take and we just uh, stay super healthy. But still, uh, for our sake, I would recommend that we all take care of our bodies, of our vessels that we will have for another 50 or 100 years or hopefully more. Yeah. So that brings me to my next question, which some people are going to be shocked to hear the answer. How long 
do you want to live and why? So uh, I always say I want to live at least 500 years. And, uh, and I think it's going to be possible because uh, I think that we just have to, you know, take care of ourselves and stay healthy for another 20, 30 years. And in the meantime, all these scientists that we are now visiting on our trip, they will come up with amazing breakthroughs that will boost our lives with another 20 and 50 years. And then in this extra time, another 50 and another 50. So it's not about getting 200 years overnight. It will come gradually, but I believe it will come. And uh, as, as we travel, I'm becoming more and more hopeful. And uh, to answer your second question, why? You know, the, fir- the most important thing is I just love life. Life is amazing. It's amazing to wake up every day and just follow your purpose and, uh, and do things you love and support the others. This is just amazing. So if we get another hundred years, we could learn new things and, uh, and as I said, become a doctor or become an astronaut or I don't know, even a fireman and just serve others and take care of our families. This is just super exciting. So yeah, like I hope that when I will reach 500, there will be uh, an option. Hey, you want another 500? Why not? You know, there will be more galaxies to see in, in the universe. So I know it sounds a bit like science fiction, but as I said, uh, what we observe is that these things are, are coming. And even like very serious scientists like C- Steve Horvath, who invented the Horvath clock. And usually when he's on stage, he's very, very serious. And when we ask him about longevity, escape velocity, is he a believer? He said, you know, is it going to, be, to, to happen? Yes, it is going to happen. It's pure math. Uh, the question is when. But then he also added that taking into consideration what happened with AI in the recent years. Like if you ask somebody about AI two years ago, he would tell you, oh yeah, it's the future. It's the science fiction. And now it's here. It's becoming the very real thing. So also Steve Hobart said, hey, Maybe with longevity, we're also much closer than we think we are. Maybe it's in five years. And of course, it will be a huge change to our society. But I believe it will be a good one. Now, imagine having uh, Einstein for another 200 years, how many amazing things he could discover. But same for us, you know, being able to just live with our great, great, great children and (laughs) bring them up. Amazing, you know, inspiring more souls around. Yeah, it just makes me think of like the exponential growth of wisdom and experience because I'm a physician and one of the things that happens when you're a physician is when you get more experience, it everything gets better, you know, like your job gets easier. You start seeing connections and you don't have that when you first start practicing. So it doesn't matter how many new hundreds of doctors are trained. They all have to go through those first five, 10, 15 years before it really starts feeling good and comfortable and you start making even more leaps in your learning. So can you imagine if you're able to practice this for decades and decades and decades with a sharp mind, how good you would get and how much more you can contribute to society, how much you can pass down that wisdom to your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, because otherwise every time an older person dies, they take that with them. They take that wisdom with them unless they wrote it all down and passed it down, which was the advantage of storytelling and passing all this information down. So I'm with you. I've never thought about 500 because in my mind that seems completely impossible and unfathomable, but I'm already getting stressed about being almost halfway to a hundred and feeling like I don't have quite enough time left. So I'm with you that I want as much time as I can have on this planet in a way that I'm still capable to grow and learn and contribute. 
But I'm just like super duper duper curious. So I'm just going to throw this question at you. What do you think happens to us when we die? Oh, I don't think about that. Um, First of all, I want to make sure that, you know, I stay in my vessel (laughs) as long as possible. And then, then we'll see. You know, um, five years ago or six already, I started a path of self growth and, uh, you know, taking care of my, my mindset, my heart. I did an MDMA induced therapy to uh, heal my trauma from my childhood. And uh, on, on my path of growth, I started to meet some, I call them magic people who at first were woo-woo for me, you know, t- talking about these reincarnations, talking about the energy around us and so on. And at the beginning, I was like, oh my God, what are they talking about? I'm just a regular guy. Let's speak technology. This is something I can understand. But at the end, you know, I started to get closer to all these people speaking about the energy. And, um, you know, I think that we have so much magic in our lives right now, like a woman giving a birth from her belly to a child and there is a new life suddenly. So this is magic. So why not other kinds of magic? No, uh, why not, yes, ascending and just uh, lifting our consciousness to another world? Like anything can happen. But uh, before I know what's the next step, I will make sure that, you know, I stay here for a couple of hundreds of years at least. And then maybe we will know before we have to make this another step. Yeah. You're just loving this incarnation so much. You're not worried about it. <laughs> you're like, I yes. want to stick around for a while. I'm not worried about it. So I love it. Thank you for answering that question. All right. Tell me about the Beyond Time project. You've already said you're traveling around the world with your son. Um, tell me what you're doing and what you're hoping to achieve with this project. So uh, my son uh, just finished high school and uh, he decided, hey, I'm ready to go on a gap year with my father. So uh, You're lucky. You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we started planning that, and uh, in the meantime, I also said at my company, as I still work as a CMO at a robotics company, hey, now I can just work one or two days a week uh, remotely just to help you grow, but the rest I'm all committing to longevity because this is my passion, and I also want it for myself and for my family, so I want to make sure that it's happening. And uh, so we plan to have this uh, quest for longevity around the world to get to know all these sub scientists, biohackers, nutritionists, doctors that are all uh, working towards this amazing goal. And uh, at the beginning, we we were just planning to you know do some basic social media stuff. Even though we are not so such big fans of social media, we know how harmful it is to the people. And, uh, and then, you know, some of friends from the media and some movie producers just told me, Hey, just maybe get these top notch cameras, uh, that are Netflix approved and do a documentary. And at the beginning it was, yeah, should I do that? Like it's something I never did before. I was doing commercials, uh, for TV, but not really a movie, but Somehow I bought it and I started talking to the people. I started doing a concept of making a movie on, on our way. And I said, why not? And uh, then we decided, okay, we're making a documentary uh, to inspire people with all our adventures and meeting all these amazing people around the world that, first of all, longevity is for everyone that this is something that we can all start doing now, that it's not science fiction anymore. And, you know, just inspire them to make the first step on the way and also inspiring them with hope that it's not just about healthy and graceful aging, like in the blue zones, but actually that there are potentially hundreds of years ahead of us. So 
we want to show them everything, not just the blue zones, which are, of course, an amazing concept and they should be popping up all around the world, but also with these biohacking upgrades and radical life extension tools. So uh, uh, we already prepared a, a trailer and we only share it with our friends now or with some media people because we cannot share it before we sign a contract with a media platform because they have to be the first. But all the people that show, uh, you know, saw our trailer, they were like, I'm ready to watch it. Like the whole movie, like, where is it? <laughs> when it's going to be? Then, of course, I'm saying, hey, we still need, uh, you know, at least one year because we finish our quest in August and then we still need four or five months to edit everything. But it's coming. It's coming. And uh, I hope, as uh, Liz Parrish told us, that this movie is going to change the world because, you know, for many people, the science behind longevity is too complicated. Like there are so many things to understand. And when you listen to the scientists, me, I sometimes don't understand them. <laughs> so uh, we want to show it to the people uh, through our adventures, through our father-son quest around the world, which is very emotional, so it will be easy to watch. And in the meantime, introduce them to different aspects of longevity. So I hope this will inspire masses. And then these masses will uh, create a demand also towards the governments to stimulate the growth of longevity industry. Then the funds will start pouring into the industry. So it will grow faster and we will be uh, thrilled to have it for us, me and you. So it's not only about healthy 100 years, but let's go 200 and then let's go on. Nice. So y'all are still traveling, right? You still have a few more months of travel left? Yes, yes, yes. We are uh, now in our sixth month. Uh, actually, at the moment, we are in Australia, Melbourne. Uh, after that, we go to New Zealand then for a while to Singapore, where we're also going to talk at a conference. And, uh, and then uh, California, Florida, Costa Rica, another blue zone, and uh, Chile, where also uh, Brian Kennedy just told me yesterday that there is a research center that he is working with. So he's inviting us there. And then Switzerland and uh, Copenhagen and a lot of other countries. So I think it's still like 15 countries ahead of us. And of course, it's pretty exciting. Oh my gosh, what a dream. And I, I'm a mother, my son is about to be 19. He's a freshman in college. We had talked about doing a gap year, but when it all came to it, I own a business brick and mortar as a pediatrician and it just wasn't going to work out. But I feel like it's, kind of would be a dream for me and all those places to travel together. What a wonderful experience with your son. What is he hoping to do after this gap year? Does he know what he would like to study for a career, what he would like to do next? So, uh, yeah, our got this uh, quest that we're doing, it is also time for him to, you know, get inspired. I told him, hey, we will meet my friends that are scattered all around the world and you will just talk to them and get inspired what you really want to do. And um, so far, the choice is that he wants to go in the direction of design. And of course, being part of this Beyond Time project, making a movie with me, is also a great step in this uh, direction because, you know, uh, it's also about motion design. You know, making a movie is part of that. And uh, I told him that after our quest, he will already have a job in his hand. Like he can be a video videographer and uh, he learns more than doing five year studies probably on the quest. So he should choose studies where he will get inspired more and he will just meet some great people and just be a student, you know, live life. So yeah, uh, yeah he chose design. He's still, uh, uh, thinking ab about applying to different countries, uh, to Netherlands, but also Spain and Italy. We'll see what he chooses. Uh, and yes, yeah, like fingers crossed for him. So exciting. I love it. All right. Tell me about the longevity map. 
what does it contain and how can we access it? So as I said at the beginning, I created this longevity map, first of all, uh, to show to everyone a helicopter view on different branches of longevity. So longevity basics, biohacking upgrades and, and radical life extension tools. But it, it is also a tool for us as we travel around the world, we were just filling in the blanks. So we see, hey, we still have to uh, put in our movie 3D bioprinting or nanobiotechnology. So we are talking to scientists and trying to get connections to different people around the world who will help us with that. And so far, all this longevity community is treating us as family uh, and they are helping us very, very much. And uh, if you uh, want to get a longevity map, it's just enough to go uh, on our Instagram account, Longevity Advocate, write a word map, DM us with map, M-A-P, and then you will uh, get a link to this longevity map and you can download a PDF so that it helps you on your uh, own longevity quest. So, um, and of course, uh, I also created a very simple page, longevityadvocate.com, uh, where you can get the basics uh, about longevity. So feel free to use everything that is there. I usually direct all my friends uh, so that they can learn about supplements, medications, maybe learn about some documentaries that are already there in the field of nutrition and longevity. So just very basic knowledge. We don't sell anything. It's just father and son traveling around the world, trying to inspire ourselves and people around us. Yeah. And I actually think your website has a lot of useful information. I was really uh, getting a lot from the supplements page and seeing some of the things that I do and learning more about other things. So I'd love to know more about your personal longevity protocol. I know that with travel, you probably can't do all of the habits and behaviors you'd like to do when you're home and in one place. But what are the things that you like to incorporate into your lifestyle and your habits in order to support your longevity? Okay. So as we were saying, at first, all the basics possible. So uh, first of all, seven, eight hours of sleep and as dark and as cold as possible. And this is a funny point because when I tell my friends that you should sleep in cold, they are usually sleeping in cold, but they only have their face in cold and everything is covered with a very thick duvet. And I tell them, no, <laughs> you have to feel cold. So you should be sleeping under the sheets and not under the blanket. And oh gosh. This, like, it took me one or two months to adjust, but uh, the quality of sleep is getting much better uh, as you do this, uh, do this step. Then uh, uh, the second thing is nutrition. And uh, of course, we are not staying with any particular diet. We are just trying to eat the real food. And of course, as many veggies as possible and uh, try to avoid uh, too many carbs. Of course, carbs are everywhere, but we try not to eat uh, noodles or too much rice and try to avoid bread. And uh, a hack to survive without bread for me was adding nuts to, to a salad. Because when you add nuts, you feel fulfilled and you, you have something there to crunch. And, and this helped me with uh, avoiding bread. And then the third thing is uh, exercise. Like we exercise at least one, one and a half hour a day. If, uh, you know, it's just enough to do some push-ups and uh, uh, sit-ups and stretch a lot. If we have an opportunity, we go for yoga, which is amazing for longevity, you know, for the mind and for the body. And, uh, and another thing, we try to meditate you know, at least every day for a few minutes before going to sleep. But uh, actually, every time we are on a beach, we always sit down and just try to get into our space. And of course, we try to avoid alcohol. We have a beer, a small beer once a week. Uh, usually when I'm at home, it's less, but, you know, on travels, it is a holiday vibe. So we're having that from time to time. And my son just turned 18, so it's legal uh, <laughs> to do here. 
And, um, and there is one more step in this longevity basics, which uh, I call, uh, you know, don't die from something stupid. So it's not just about not taking unreasonable risks, but it's also about screening ourselves. So as we visit longevity clinics, we also try to check our biomarkers. And uh, uh, lately in Thailand, in a clinic, I uh, also did a check on the heavy metals that are in my blood. And I was surprised uh, how many of them there were, especially lead. And then they did a chelation IV uh, just to get rid of these heavy metals. And uh, I think this is something that everybody should do. So, uh, you know, as we learn, as, as we travel, we learn and we just try to introduce more and more things in our lives. Uh, and from the biohacking upgrades, what we can do on our travels, we just take some basic uh, uh, vitamins, like vitamin E for skin. Of course, we are exposed to the sun and, uh, and uh, omega-3 fatty acids and uh, some vitamin B. And I'm also taking metformin, which, uh, you know, I read a lot of good research on that. Of course, we are still waiting for the results of this huge clinical trial that Neil Razilai is doing, but I'm listening to the scientists. So uh, I started taking that. And anytime we can, we do sauna and cold plunges. We are big fans of that. And, uh, and that's it, you know, it's just doing the basics on the travels. And a supplement that everybody is talking about as we travel and as we talk to the scientists, this is rapamycin. And uh, this is something I didn't start taking yet, but most of the scientists are saying, hey, we still need clinical trials, but life is running. So we are taking that because, you know, potential benefits are huge and uh, they say that all the supplements are here and rapamycin is there so uh, i can't wait to uh, to see the results of the clinical trials uh, as far as i know uh, in singapore at nus uh, university uh, andrea meyer and brian kennedy are going to start the clinical trials for rapamycin this year so we should have the results at the end of this year so keeping fingers crossed, because uh, this will potentially do wonders to all of us. Yeah, super interesting. I know I've been following that. I'm not doing any prescription things at this point yet, but I try to do all the over-the-counter, a lot of the over-the-counter supplements, especially the ones that make sense for a vegan, for sure, omega-3 and um, B12 and vitamin D and all of that. So it's very, I would be very interested to see these studies and see what they show if, if it's worth uh, getting my doctor to prescribe some of these things so that I can support my longevity. Well, Marek, this has been really great. I've loved learning from you. There's just a few more questions I have for you on how you approach the world and see things. So I'd love to know, what do you wish more people knew? Uh. So, first of all, uh, I wish that everybody was wearing a CGM because then they would learn so much about the nutrition that they will change the diet overnight and uh, without taking any drugs, medications, just really taking care of their vessels. Uh, the second thing is I wish everybody knew that it's worth it to prioritize wellness and health over uh, convenience. You know, most, even most of my friends, uh, they just live a very convenient life and they are a little bit obese and uh, they exercise a lot, but not too much, you know, just not to get out of the comfort zone. And I try to inspire them, you know, one by one. I think I'm doing well. Uh, and, you know, like it's just, as I said before, getting these 10, 15 extra years, it's so easy. Just do the basics. And still, 
people are, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol, smoking cigarettes, especially as you travel in Asia, a lot of people smoke. And uh, they eat whatever, uh, and they don't really take care of, uh, of their vessels. And I, I tell them, hey, why are you doing that? Like, imagine you're dying, and somebody tells you, hey, you could get 15 years of healthy life extra. Would you take it then? Of course you would. So why don't you take it now? You know, just change your life, change your habits, change your lifestyle. It's so easy to get amazing life, extra years of that. So why not do that? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. But I was surprised that sometimes I would ask people if they're interested in living a long life. And a lot of people would say no, because what they associate with older age is poor health and disability because they haven't seen a different example. So to them, it may not seem worth it. They're not even thinking about it. Even my own husband, who's an internal medicine hospitalist, because he sees the extreme of poor health, in his mind, being older just meant being sick. So it was me having to teach him about this and show up the documentaries and be like, it, that doesn't have to be our reality just because it's the reality for the majority of Americans. It can be different. So I think also one of the ways to help motivate people is that they have to know that it's possible and that it's an option because otherwise they're like, well, if I'm just going to feel horrible, then anyway, I just want to party now and feel you know, stimulated or get high or get drunk, you know, because they don't even see how good it feels to feel good. <laughs> you know, it's hard to explain, but a lot of people have never felt good long enough to know what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. It, usually I'm, uh, I'm having the same problem with my friends. They say, Oh no, I don't want to be old and crazy. And, uh, and I say, tell them, Hey, imagine you are 100 and you feel like you're 30 and you look like you're 30 or 40, wouldn't you, wouldn't you take that? And they said, yeah, of course. So uh, it's coming. Just prepare for that. You know, your only task now is stay as healthy as possible for another 20 years and just do everything you can. You know, uh, I give them my longevity map and tell them just do anything you can from this map and it will push you forward. And... Uh, Sometimes, you know, people are asking me, okay, you are this longevity advocate, so should I use Wi-Fi? Should I use Bluetooth? And I tell them, hey, probably it's not so great for you, but this is like a promile of things you should do. So concentrate on the big stuff. Yes, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, don't get stuck on those little things and get confused about these little, little details. How do you define success in this lifetime? Oh. No, first of all, um, it's, uh, okay, I will tell from my personal, personal perspective. Um, most of my life, I was pretty successful from a business perspective, but I was sad inside all the time. I didn't know why. I thought that it's normal. And five years ago, I started this uh, personal growth path and started going to some retreats where people, people were speaking about emotions, about their childhoods. And I was like, oh my God, what are they doing? What am I doing here? You don't speak about that stuff. You know, it's hidden somewhere uh, under the bed. And, uh, and then uh, someone, actually it was Nicole Gibson, who is from Australia. I just met her a week ago. And she told me, that I have to fall in love with myself. And I was like, oh my God, this is the heresy. You know, like I was <laughs> brought up in, a, in Christianity and there you are, that they tell you you are the sin. You have to blame yourself for all the sins of the world. And loving yourself, this is so selfish. So I said, how can I even do that? And, but still she convinced me that I should start loving myself because then I will uh, start loving the world around me and the people around me and everything will be better. So I decided, hey, I will try. Next year, I'm, I'm going to try to start loving myself. And it was even hard uh, for me to, to say it. It was so weird. And, and then I started changing my life. And then I learned about uh, MDMA-induced therapy, which is the best therapy in the world for trauma release. 
I've learned that I had a very serious trauma from my childhood and I started healing that and suddenly everything started to open up and not just my mind that was getting free, but first of all, my heart. Suddenly I let myself feel the emotions and, uh, and after three months of therapy uh, with a the therapist, suddenly I woke up and I, I felt free and I felt happy. And of course, I still had a, a long way of my therapy uh, to heal my traumas. But since then, I started liking myself. That was the first step. And, uh, and I started to be happy every day. And I, I understood that we will always have problems. That's life. But we can be still happy every day while having these problems. So this is a huge success for me. It took me th three more years to start loving myself. I think I achieved that a year ago. And uh, when I, I decided that I'm ready to remember everything from my past and heal it. And that's amazing, you know, and I wish that everybody did that. Uh, actually, I'm planning also to recall just a testimonial uh, from me about this therapy because this just changed my life. And uh, I know there are millions of people who have traumatic experiences. Usually they don't even remember what happened uh, because this is hidden so deep inside. And I want to shout to all of them, hey, it's possible. Uh, it's possible to get out of that. You know, even when the worst ha things happen to you in your life, you can still heal yourself, then everything is so much better. So this is my success. Wow. What a beautiful story. That gave me butterflies in my stomach. I mean, it's just, that's amazing. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. So I know you want to live 500 years. So this question may not apply to you <laughs> as it does for people living, you know, our typical lifespan, but is there a goal or dream? I guess we'll say, is there a goal or dream so far that has evaded you or something that you have left on your bucket list that you're just like, I really want to tackle that. So, uh, so far I'm like fulfilling most of my goals and I've learned to be bold because if you're bold, if you ask for something, you just get it. And, you know, we have an, an example with my quest and, uh, making a movie like a year ago, I didn't know any scientists, you know, I just read their books and now they treat me as a family and with friends and they are supporting me on our quest and in making the movie. And I would never get that if I was bold. So, uh, so I got that, but there are two things I'm still looking forward to. The first one is a house on the beach. Like this is my dream, you know, just mm. to have a little house on the very beach. So I can just go out in the morning, meditate on, on the sand and then jump and go surfing on the waves and then go back and just have amazing breakfast with my children overlooking the sea. So this is my dream. Uh, and I hope to fulfill that soon. And uh, the second one is uh, get a wife. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> um, I like I have kids, uh, but I don't have a wife. Uh, and, uh, and that's my dream forever. And I think it will finally happen sooner than later because, you know, just experiencing the world together is so much better than doing that alone. And, um, of course I can feel that. And my son can feel that as we are on this quest together, sometimes, uh, you know, we have enough of each other and we need some time alone. So he's getting somewhere into the city, exploring by himself. And then when he comes back, I say, Hey, so how was it? Oh, it was beautiful. But you, if you don't have someone to share it with you at the very moment, it's so much less. So uh, he understands that I do understand that. And I know that now he's, you know, going to study somewhere in other part of the world. So um, I need to find my another crazy partner to share my life with. I love it. Okay. Well, all the uh, listeners out there. Marek is looking for a wife. He wants to travel the world, have a house on the beach, and is going to live a really long time. So, you know, I don't know, pr pros and cons to have a husband that lives a really long time. We'll see. We'll see who replies to that ad there. <laughs> yeah, I love of, it. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, everything I learn, I want to share with everybody around me and of course my friends and my family. So a wife will get a very long life too. And uh, yeah, I hope to also yes. to get two more kids, best twins. Uh, because I think that, you know, bringing up a kid is an amazing thing. You know, you, it's like the ultimate job. You can be a coach, you can be a role model. It's everything combined and it sh can show your world to someone. So uh, even though it's not so easy, as I can also see now with my son, like being 24-7, not so easy, especially when your son is turning 18. Um, so it's not easy neither for him nor for me. But still, uh, this is an amazing experience just to share your life with the people you love. Yes, for sure. Oh, I just, I love hearing other people's dreams. I, I was smiling so hard. My face was hurting. So thank you for sharing that. The only thing I, I think about children too, as a pediatrician, is it definitely interferes with that first level of longevity because they interfere with your sleep big time. So <laughs> I probably would have had more children if it doesn't affect the sleep so much because I'm very selfish about my sleep. But those are but beautiful. The, I think technology will come in handy. You know, I don't know, these mattresses that are just shaking your kid a little bit when, when he sleeps so <laughs> that he sleeps better, like in a car. You know, yeah. there are ways. Yeah. I will say as a pediatrician, though, even that often doesn't work, but it's okay. We'll, we'll get there someday. We'll have the perfect sleep pod that feels <laughs> like the womb and they won't cry and it'll be perfect. Exactly. All right, Marek, what does it mean to be human? Oh, uh, okay. Me now and me five years ago would answer differently. So me now, uh, I'd say uh, being a human is loving yourself and the world around you and then having a purpose uh, in life and uh, this is something i've learned in my life but also i've learned from the people we met on our quest that when you have a purpose everything is so much better you just get up in the morning and you know what to do and usually a purpose in, it's not just to get something for yourself, but it's also something to give to the world. And that's driving you forward. And uh, I wish to everyone to have that. Because if you have a purpose, for sure, you will live longer. Because you have the will to live. Yes. And that's scientifically proven as well. So we know that there is an association there with purpose and longevity and just joy and well-being. It just makes you feel healthier. It gives you that stamina. So. So yes, I love that one. I love your definition. You know, um, as, as we travel and as we learn, I have to admit that the most important part of longevity is the right mindset. Uh, everything else follows. Uh, nutrition, exercise, biohacks, everything follows. But first, it's the mindset to have the will to live on and to explore and just to leave because uh, sometimes when I speak to uh, uh, different people they say hey why should I live longer than 80 and one friend of mine he said no I I already did everything so when I will be turning 60 I will make a birthday party and commit a suicide and I'm like oh my god <gasps> why <laughs> That's yeah, it's like that's really traumatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like life is so amazing, you know. Just fall in love with love with, with with your life, and just go on and on and on and on. So I think that most of the people who say that they don't want to live so long is that they are not happy with their lives, yeah. and uh, there are a lot of people just you know living a life in a treadmill, just running forward, but still staying in the same spot like a little mouse and uh, we just need to help them, inspire them to get out of the treadmill and start living and then they will live longer for sure. Yes, absolutely. Ugh, 
What an inspiring conversation. I am so glad I had you on the show. This is perfect at this time. And I know that there's so many people that need to hear this message. It's so important. So if you Thank could you. please tell us where we can connect with you. I know you said it earlier in the show, but let's leave it again, where we can connect with you and how we can support you at this time in your journey. Okay. So first of all, it's uh, the easiest is to uh, connect on Instagram, Longevity Advocate. We are not typical social media influencers. As I said, uh, you know, we still prioritize living. So uh, we don't post every day or five times a day. It's just from time to time, from our travels, what we see, what we meet. So it's great to connect here. And um, if anyone here is listening who would like to share his message about longevity, uh, just reach out to us. Uh, there is. Uh, an email on our webpage, longevityadvocate.com. And hey, share your story and maybe uh, we will visit you on our, uh, on our quest. And actually, I'm, I'm hoping also to visit you in, in the state of Washington because so we're going to visit this parish there and Ben Greenfield. So it's just nearby. Uh, so I hope that we will have a little interview for our movie. And uh, if there are some uh, movie producers who love to support us, just come here, uh, always help is needed. We got connected to some amazing people in Hollywood. Yeah, I know it's crazy, <laughs> but <laughs> why not? You know, let's just be bold and reach the stars. And we really want to share this message, inspiring message about longevity with as many people as possible. So just help us spread the message. Oh, Marek, thank you so much. You're so inspiring. I really am grateful for everything that you're doing. So thank you for taking on this quest with your son. I hope that you continue to learn so much so that you can share it with us and we can all spread the love of longevity. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Dr. Yami. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you and for your work because you are inspiring so many people and yeah, let's all share the knowledge about the basics and just heal people, not only with different kinds of drugs, but just with all the changes we can make ourselves. My name is Marek Petrovsky, Longevity Advocate, and I am human. Thank you for listening to another episode of I Am Human. I would be so honored if you subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. We love our listeners and take your feedback seriously. If you have questions or constructive feedback, you can email us at podcast at dryami.com. That's podcast at d-o-c-t-o-r-y-a-m-i.com. I am your host, Dr. Yami Casorla Lancaster. I Am Human is produced by myself and Alejandra Parra. Graphics designed by Alejandra Parra. Music by Angela Sof with Glowbox Productions and edited by the Castos Production Team. Remember, human, you are here for a reason. Have fun, explore, and live your life to the fullest.